Hi, if you're like me, you know the subject of today's show from her film work of the late 60s and early 1970s. She was a feisty woman of advancing years that became a film star at the age of 72. The thing is, she made her first film in 1915, 54 years before she became a film star. She had a very interesting life, but the part I'm going to talk about today happened in 1920, and that's when she had both her legs broken on purpose. She was, of course, the remarkable Ruth Gordon, an Academy Award winner for the film Rosemary's Baby, the star of the cult hit Harold and Maude, a Broadway headlining actress, the writer of both stage and screen, and a novelist. She did so much in her life, and I've been researching her, and today I'm going to tell you some of the things that I discovered. Well, hello there, old man Kelly here, Jeff to my friends, and you can call me Jeff. So Ruth Gordon, before she started appearing on TV and films, before she was a novelist and playwright, she was a huge star of the stage, but it wasn't easy for her to get there. Most, including her parents, tried their best to dissuade her from becoming an actor. In fact, a school she attended to learn acting told her she wasn't acting material and wouldn't let her come back for a second term but Ruth kept going on to become a huge star of the stage. Ruth was an amazing person and showed that it's possible to achieve your dreams even if everybody else says you can't. She was born in Quincy, Massachusetts as Ruth Gordon Jones on October 30th, 1896 to a relatively poor family. But it was after she saw an actress named Hazel Dawn in a production of The Pink Lady that she decided that she wanted to become an actor. This was much to her parents' disappointment. Her father hoped that she would become a physical education teacher. Ruth later said, My Aunt Ada told Mama for Ruth to be an actress is like being a harlot. But Ruth fought them all and wore them down, determined to make her dreams come true. Then the small, soft-spoken girl appeared in an amateur stage production, and afterwards her mother told her, How can you be an actress? You can't even be heard, Ruth. She traveled to New York, but after failing to make it as an actress, her parents talked her into enrolling in the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. But it was at that school that Ruth was called into the office of the president of the school, and he told her, We feel you are not suited to acting. You show no promise. She was refused a second term and sent home, but of course this made Ruth more determined than ever to succeed. She begged her parents to let her go to New York again to try to make it as an actress. Now, the family had very little money, but her father gave the young 19-year-old $50 and bought her a one-way ticket to New York. She left home on August 1st, 1915. But she found things very difficult in the big city. For months, she tried to break into the theater with no success. The only work she found was in Fort Lee, New Jersey, playing bit parts in a few silent films, which paid her $5 a day. Ruth finally got her big break playing Nibs and Peter Pan on Broadway opposite Maude Adams. Now, from what I've read, Ruth still had no real acting ability, but this part suited her because she had very little dialogue and the fact that she was small and cute really helped. The New York Times reported, Miss Gordon is ever so gay as Nibs. That review, Ruth had framed and had hung in her home for the rest of her life. That led to a play called Fair and Warmer. The play had been a success on Broadway, and Ruth was cast in the touring company that played all over the Midwest. The whole time Ruth was with the play, she was in danger of being fired. The only thing that kept her employed was the fact they couldn't find anybody else to take the role. The director even told her to improvise lines because she had trouble remembering them. Once that play was over, she was back in New York and was running out of money. Then she met the man who would change her life, Gregory Kelly. Gregory was an established Broadway star, and it was through him she got a part in the play 17. She played Lola Pratt, known as the baby talk lady. Gregory began working with her, teaching her how to be an actress, how to memorize lines and such. Still, it didn't start off good. Haywood Braun of the New York Tribune wrote, Anybody who looks like that and acts like that must get off the stage but Ruth kept on working. One had to create an illusion in the theater to be successful, and this Gregory Kelly taught me. In fact, he taught me everything I know. 
It didn't take long for the two to become lovers. Ruth would later say that he was adorable, just like Jack Lemmon. But this was in the early 19th century, a day and age when sexual relationships out of wedlock was considered scandalous, and Ruth knew it could ruin both their careers. When she became pregnant, she had an illegal, painful abortion. After that, the 22-year-old Ruth and the 27-year-old handsome star got married. On a side note here, Wikipedia says the two were married in 1921, but that can't be true. I found this newspaper story from January 5th, 1919, and it said that Gregory was married last week to Ruth Gordon, and one from January 19th, 1919 that read, I may add that Gregory Kelly is married. His new bride is Ruth Gordon. I conclude that they got married late in 1918. Gordon's next big play would become Tweedles in 1923, but before that she had to deal with a deep, dark secret, one that would keep her off the stage for months. It began when she was in Chicago. She was in a State Street department store when she saw a pair of legs coming towards me in the mirror. They were so funny. I laughed. And as I got closer, they were mine. You see, she had been hiding the fact that she was bow-legged for years. She knew how to stand on the stage to hide her condition, but finally she decided to do something about it. I always worried because my legs were bowed, she said. It interfered with my acting. Whenever I tried to act, I was thinking about how to pose on stage so that the audience would be watching my acting, not my bow legs. She thought about it for years, but after seeing Marilyn Miller's beautiful straight legs in a show in Atlantic City, she decided to do something about it. Marilyn Miller apparently was known for her beautiful, perfect legs. Dr. Edwin Ryerson of Chicago's Presbyterian Hospital told her that it was something she should have had taken care of when she was a kid. And at first, he refused to help her, saying that she had two healthy legs, so an operation was really unnecessary. Ruth begged, telling him that she needed two good-looking legs for her career. I can never be a great actress, she pleaded. My bow legs won't let me. When I'm on stage, I have to keep my mind on them instead of my part. Finally, Dr. Ryerson agreed. Now, I don't know what hospitals were like in the 1920s, but I can only imagine that there was some sort of risk in having her legs straightened. After all, each leg had to be broken twice, once below and once above the knee, so... When I went onto the operating table, I was smiling and as happy as could be. I wasn't a bit worried. The doctor felt my pulse and all he said was, oh God, he thought it would be going a mile a minute, but instead it was normal. Doctors broke each leg twice, then chiseled out some of the bone, then set them fair and square. Then they put them in casts to grow together straight. Her husband, Gregory, fully supported her and stayed with her the whole time, showering her with presents. said, I'm happy because both my legs are broken. And after the operation, she said, oh, it hurt, but I believe the results will be worth the suffering. It was two months later in February when she finally got the casts off her leg, though she had to spend a couple more weeks in a wheelchair, but eventually she got back on her feet. I haven't been so supremely happy for three years, she said in January. By September, she was back on the stage in a play called Bristol Glass. Over the next few years, she would be on the stage, sometimes with her husband, sometimes without. And I figure it must have been a magical time for Ruth Gordon. For the first time, she had two great legs, she was newly married to a handsome young man, and she was starring in Broadway plays and almost always getting great reviews. In 1927, Ruth landed a role in a very successful play called Saturday's Children. It was during that play that she really blossomed as an actress. It was the first real acting I ever did. 
acting in the deep sense, one emotion underneath and one on the surface. Isn't that how it is in real life? But sadly, it was at that time, during one of her most successful plays, that tragedy happened. Her husband of eight years passed away of a heart condition. But I think that's a, another story for another day. Before I go, I just wanted to thank everybody who puts those kind comments down and tells me how much they appreciate my videos. That means a lot because I've gotten a few bad ones. I just got one recently that said I did a very poor job because I'm in my own video too much. I don't know what that was about, but those ones really sting for some reason. So when I get these those nice ones, it really makes me feel good. So thank you so much. I'll be back soon with something else. I think I'm going to review another movie next. Bye-bye.